Argetta, 29 years old, three years older than the prospect out of Chicago. Aguirre, two inches taller, five feet, nine inches tall. Check out the edge and reach of six inches for Aguirre, but he's a sizable underdog. Back inside the octagon we go to Joe Martinez. And now, fight fans, we are set to go with the next fight tonight. Three rounds, this in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter standing five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in officially 145 and one half pounds, and in seven fights, stands perfect with seven victories and no defeats. Fighting out of us, we go Illinois. Here's the undefeated, Slick Nick Aguirre. And across the octagon, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in officially 146 pounds and in nine fights, holds a record of eight victories with one defeat. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Orland Park, Illinois. Oh, Here is Dan, the determined Argetta! And your referee in charge of the action, Mark Smith. U.S. Air Force veteran, commercial pilot Mark Smith. Getting back to action inside the octagon in our first event of the year. Nick Aguirre making right, his Nick, debut. Ready? Dan Argetta, yeah, you may have noticed Cub Swanson, the UFC Hall of Famer in his corner. Cub Swanson acts as a coach, as his manager. We have such a strong connection. Argetta said he was training back in Chicago back in the day. Cub Swanson was the first person to hit him in the face in the training room. <laughs> Creates bonds. Argetta said, I like that I'm facing another southpaw because oh. it's like a wrestling match. Both of us have our right leg forward. I could turn this into a, a wrestling match with punches. And here we are wrestling. Right off the bat, a couple big punches, close the distance. Oh, single leg, and then he swings him down. And this is the balance we were talking about from McGeary. Like, this is where we get to see his ground game from his back. We knew that there would be times that Argetta was able to take him down. Now we can see if the balance can be made with the, with the, with the guard of the Gary. Let's slice him up soon. Let's slice him up, he's gonna break. There you go. We'll start watch your eyes. You wanna go? Start to hang on there you go. slammed him right into that fence. And what do we know about gentlemen with their head up against the the fence and you're you're shoving that guard up against the fence like that, it's hard to shoot up triangles, it's hard to shoot up arm bars. And you could feel that that's what Aguirre was looking to set up. Argetta felt that put him against the fence. Yeah, and he can really try to posture up and ground and pound from here. But now Aguirre trying to roll through, get to the legs here, even if he just uses this to get the be to a better position, work his way back up. But Argetta all over it, staying on top. Awkward position here, kind of a reverse mount, if you will. Now Aguirre able to sit back up, but he's still wearing the legs of Argetta for the moment. Argetta looking to isolate that right arm of Aguirre in the transition, who's protecting it so far. Ooh. Nearly cranked it behind him. That might force Aguirre to have to roll backwards and not have this arm get taken here. Oh, but now Argetta is also triangle. high here. Three minutes to go in the round. He's got a reverse triangle set up by being high. He can tri switch to that, but it doesn't look like what he's wanting. He's wanting an arm bar here, but both of those options are here. You can go reverse triangle or arm bar, depending on what Argetta wants to feel here, but he's looking to just scoot out the top. And now reversed by Aguirre. Mm. Got one hook in here against the fence. He's gonna try to drag him down. Nice work there. You see Argetta is aware that he's not going to let him throw that left hook in here. Trying to fight that foot off so that prevent the body triangle. He gets it anyway. Leg on the inside. Now, which way do you want to go if you're Argetta to try to reverse the position? Is it helpful to go toward the foot? Great question, Fitz. And it's about going, going towards the foot. You want to put the bottom of the foot on the mat, right there. That's the right way to do it. Now you get underneath that foot that he's grabbing, and that'll break the lock. But then when you start cranking on the face, that's how you get people off your legs. So it's a, it's a battle here. It's back and forth. When you start reaching down for the legs, they're going to start ripping your chin apart. When you stop fighting the legs, they're just going to stay in the position. So it's a constant back and forth. But right now, Argetta wants to get that foot to the floor. So he wants to turn to the right now, not the left. So you gotta go back and forth, it's a game here. He's gotta be careful, but just like you said, Dom, he's worrying about the position with the body triangle, and 
Got to watch his neck. He did a good job here of turning into it. He might be able to turn and square up and be on top. He's got to get that left shoulder back through. There it goes. Now he's in a dominant position yep, in the guard. First all the way and fires an elbow on the ground. Great defense. And you know, that was just slipping back and forth. Sometimes it works that way, but somebody with really, really high level back control generally doesn't give that position. They stay in that body triangle. We've seen it. Gary tries to get out of it. Clock ticking down to 60 seconds to go in round one. He's just being a blanket this entire first round. Argetta, we've seen him do it, but right now he's blanketing Gary, and Gary really doesn't have a lot of answers. Early in the round, you saw a high guard, you saw some attempts at some offense, but now you're seeing that Argetta's almost wore that out of him, and we'll see how he shows up in the second round. Not much offensive options here from Gary. And I like that Argetta stays busy. He really does look for the ground and pound, looks for the elbows, he's transitioning well, and he talked about how he knows he's physically strong. His training partners tell him how physically strong he is, and he's putting that on display here in this matchup. Oh, and now he's great at taking it back. He's got some rear naked chokes on his record. He's got 20 seconds here. Right arm not quite under the chin. Now he lets it go as Aguirre looks to explode up. A lot of dominant control time for Argetta through the first five minutes. And it appears we end round one right here. Second round coming up. Stop. Stop. Easy. You gotta end up on top of it. When you're his turn, you gotta follow him and get on top. All right, get your hands going there right now. What you got, Meech? Heavy hits on that cage. He gets to that legs, he gets to your body. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Be heavy. Moving in inches. I don't care how tired I'm going to be around you. I want you to get 10 minutes. I want you to get plus. Keep continuing. If we get that distance, keep continuing on that calf cake. Take a drink. Let's slow that heart rate. Stand up for me. Let's let him know that you're ready to go. You do this shit all day. You do this all day. Mouthpiece. You got your mouthpiece? Yeah. All right. You got your mouthpiece? All right. <coughs> UFC 283 is loaded. A new light heavyweight champ will be crowned as Glover Teixeira and Jamal Hill square off for the vacant 205 pound title. Plus, flyweight champ Davis and Figueiredo takes on interim champ Brandon Moreno for the undisputed gold UFC 283 from Rio de Janeiro. Yours next Saturday, available for purchase on ESPN+. Plus. Brazil has been waiting patiently. We're coming back. <laughs> Big punches here to start the round for Argetta. And again, moving forward, constant pressure. And in the corner of, of Aguirre, just letting his hands go and just trying to talk him through this, right? During your debut, there's a lot of nervous energy. You might feel more tired than you're used to feeling because you're in shape, but the moment can get to you a bit. Second round, hopefully he can settle in a little bit. He lost most of those grappling exchanges in the first round. And because of that, we see Argetta immediately back on the fence, looking to take this fight to the mat where he landed some really good, effective ground and pound. Let's go, do damage. Come on, guys, do something with it. Look for damage, Dan. <laughs> Back to the center, they go 90 seconds into the rounds. Looks like a Geary landed a punch there that had Argetta backpedaling for a moment. Yeah, and Dom, maybe you see the same thing. It looks like Argetta's just slowed down a little bit here in this second round. Yeah, I mean, they wrestled a heavy round yeah. in that first round, so their, their muscles are all full of blood. I think the first two and a half minutes, you're going to see these guys a little slow. And then about three minutes into the round, you'll start seeing them unload their hands a little bit more. But that's if they don't wrestle the next two and a half minutes also. Good point. So they're just full of blood right now. I think they're kind of wearing that, that heavy lactic acid out of the muscles. You might see a little speed. But you can tell by they're a little bit slower on their strikes. And now that's why I think they're getting right back to the wrestling. You can feel that. When you got all that blood, you're like, you know what? I feel a little it's slow easier and stagnant. To wrestle right now. I'm just going to shoot on some wrestling. Keep it going here. And Argetta, he was winning the whole first round with that, so why change it? 
Oh, this is absolutely the approach I would have expected coming into the second round. He, he was able to put Aguirre up against the fence when they were on top, land some good shots. He's landed some good shots here up against the fence. It's just obviously with all that wrestling move we talked about, you're seeing it be a little more labor. And for anybody at home, that's why you see these guys come out. It's not that they're gassed. It's not that they're not in shape. It's just, man, you, guys, watch your hands when you come in. do that much wrestling and try to hold another grown man down on the ground and beat him up. It's tiring. Well, how many times do you hear uh, wrestlers say when they're fighting strikers, I just want to hang on them the whole first round and try to get some of that speed away from them. And then the second round, I'll try to strike with them. I mean, you hear it all the time. We're seeing that of Argeta. He's trying to just kind of wear out Aguirre as the fight goes on. And now we're seeing a grappling battle the whole fight. Second takedown for Argeta in the fight which is a personal best in his two trips to the Octagon. Under two minutes to go in the second round. Aguirre had the guard closed. Just trying to keep Argetta in close so he can't land one of those big shots. Now, if we're talking about Aguirre, he's trying to create space in between himself and Argetta right now. You want to get those... He's got his arms underneath the chin of Argetta. He's getting his legs involved, but Argetta's just all over him like a blanket. He takes his back. He just He's a step ahead of Aguirre right now in these transitions. Yeah, and this is good for Argetta. Threatening, threatening that neck. You know, kind of crushing the jaw a little bit so that he can get both those hooks in. Now he's got him, but he's got the fence behind him, so he can't pull him back and extend himself to start to hunt that choke as much oh. as usual. But this, this is miserable for yes, not, Aguirre. Not oh, that's tight. But it is tight. Now it's in. Oh, he's fighting the hands. It's all in oh, one hand now. He turned his back to the mat, so he did a good job fighting it. Ooh. Not quitting on that position. It's really come down to hustle in this fight so far. Who's hustled more? It's been Argetta. It hasn't necessarily been crazy technique. It's just been, I'm out hustling you. I'm a step ahead of you every move. Now Mount and then Aguirre gives the back with just over 30 seconds to go in the round. He got a warning from Mark Smith. You see how he's reaching through and grabbing the right wrist of Aguirre? He let it go there for the rear naked choke, though. But he distracted him with that first. Again, Aguirre fights off the choke. He's got to last 15 more seconds to see round three. Oh, he's trying to gift wrap him there. Oh, heavy shot. And another big round for Dan Argetta. But Aguirre survives to the third. Hey, Dan. Just watch the guy. We're down two rounds, so you gotta finish him in order to win this fight. So I don't want you to walk out of here, dude, thinking that you could have done a little bit better. So you got five minutes to go and finish this dude, dude. He's tired, dude. He's tired, dude. He's tired, and he's not a better grappler than you. He's not a better fighter than you. Everything is gonna come to your heart right now. Are you gonna push through these last five minutes and leave it all out there? You are? Okay, yes, Nicole. That's all we need from you, dude. I want you to go out there and fight your heart out right now. All right? He's not better than you. He's not a better grappler. You keep him at bay. You strike and you go, Nicole. All right? His hands come you up. touch the ground. You don't stop until you get him. You win that scramble. All right? His hands come up. You level change. His hands come up from that strike. You level change. Check us out. Just be careful to back of the head. All right? Hey, down there, you got to fight back. Okay? Offering certified authentic round, items round. straight from the Octagon. UFC Collectibles is the home of official UFC memorabilia featuring event-worn fight wear and signed items from UFC's greatest athletes. Shop UFC Collectibles today. Get 10% off your order with the code UFCX. Third and final round. High kick there from Aguirre to open things up. Dean Thomas has a hot mic all afternoon. Dean, what do you see? Well, first I want to say that was great corner work by Aguirre's corner. I thought he did good. Now, the problem with Aguirre is that he needs a Hail Mary right now. And prior to this point, he's been going against a better wrestler, so he's been circling away. He can't get the Hail Mary circling away. All he's been doing is putting himself up against the fence. He's got to go forward. He's, right now, he's got to create some space. Then he's got to go forward and try to open up a big opportunity for him. I was just going to say, when this round started, that he's got to stand his ground here. He's just backpedaling a little too much 
and with somebody as aggressive as Argetta, you're going to get in trouble. He's got too good a wrestling to back yourself up against the fence. One thing that would really help Aguirre, in my opinion, is a jab. I mean, he's, we haven't really seen any jabs in this fight at all. They're two southpaws that aren't used to facing other southpaws, and that's what I see. When you're a southpaw versus southpaw, you need your lead arm, your, your lead leg. You need that lead stuff because your stances are opposite. They're used to going against same side stance. So it's, it's interesting to watch that they don't have a lot of jabs, so the big shots can't be set up on the feet. And when Aguirre was asked about his opponent, Dan Argetta, he says, I need to keep my distance and I need to use my jab like crazy. He just hasn't been able to employ it as the fight's gone on. It's been all hooks. You've seen a lot of right hooks out of Aguirre, out of, uh, Aguirre but not a lot of straight jabs. And that would really help him with his footwork and his movement. See, two right hooks landed there, and they're landing, but you need that range. Well, Argetta going in. Some heavy shots up top before changing levels again. And that's just smart for Argetta. He lands some big shots. He gets the separation. He constantly is mixing in his takedown attempts and getting them as well throughout this fight. And you look at Aguirre, and the look on his face says it all after he's taken down for a third time. One in each round now for Argetta, under three minutes to go. Aguirre's team is right. It's not like Argetta's just outclassing him with technique. He's out-hustling him is what I'm seeing. He's just a step ahead on hustling just a little bit longer in every transition, and he comes out on top in these positions because of it. Looking for that right hook. Nearly gets it in. And he almost protects it. Now, high mount, dominant position. Arqueta working right in front of his corner. Akiri looking to escape. Yeah, nice work to use defense to walk up there and try to flip over and change the position. But look, just like, there you go, Dom, out hustle, right? And that's the experience, too. It's, I, I know Argetta doesn't have an extensive UFC career quite yet, but he's been in here, he's felt this octagon before, and he knows what to expect. He's had a tough battle in his debut in the UFC, and then you come in here and you're the one that's the, the, the hammer. Because Aguirre is trying to create scramble scenarios. He's trying to use his weapons to create space, but Argetta's just out hustling in all these little transitional, um, you know, positions, basically, scrambles. Yes, Dan. Got a minute for you. Just throw. I need accuracy. Let's posture a little bit. Do damage. Minute and a half. Some huge. Deep breaths for Dan Argetta on top, 90 seconds to go. Of course, he wants to get the victory, but he desperately wanted a highlight real finish to go with it. We'll see if he can get Nick Aguirre out of there before the final horn. I like that he's been going for it, though. I, I will give that to Argetta. You know, even if he doesn't get the finish here, he mixed in big shots, he got his takedowns, he, tr he, he tried to take the back, he tried to get rear naked chokes. There was a reverse triangle position at one point. He just landed good ground and pound. Sometimes it just doesn't, you don't find it. You got a minute. You got one minute left. One minute left. Got a minute to keep it. You're at the highest level in the UFC. These guys are here for a reason. It's, it's not always easy to get a finish. Posture and hurt him. Feel it. Posture and hurt him. Work the legs up. Up kick. Up kick. Turn, 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 turn. Up, 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 up. up. Okay, we're trying to scramble out. Running out of time at this point as Argetta rolls him right to his back again. Coming up on 30 seconds to go in round three. Of course, all year long, we're celebrating 30 years. You notice the logo on the gloves of the athletes. There's also a patch on the fight kits. What a milestone it is, and we'll be celebrating all year long. Hustling for all 15 minutes. And one final dump for Dan Argetta, who is poised to get his big UFC victory this afternoon at the Apex. We'll make it official coming up next.
Next Saturday, the UFC 283 prelims get things going on ABC and ESPN from Rio de Janeiro in the feature about Octagon legend and UFC Hall of Famer Shogun Hua competes for the final time of his illustrious career against Ihor Potieria. Don't miss the UFC 283 prelim action on ABC next Saturday night at 8 Eastern. Now to make this result official with the official decision, Joe Martinez. Well, fine fans, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. All three judges have it 30-27. Your winner by unanimous decision, Dan the Determined Argetta!